So let's see what we have been given. We have been told that we have moist air, which is again a mixture, dry air plus water vapor. Okay. So this moist air, which is a mixture of dry air and water vapor, it enters the duct at 10 degrees Celsius and 80% relative humidity. So what is this 80%? This is phi that is given to us. Partial pressure of water vapor divided by the partial uh, the pressure of saturated, uh, saturated vapor at the same temperature. Okay, so these two things are given to us, and two properties define the state completely. So we have enough information about state one. So this is the moist air that's entering at this condition, and we're heating it up as it flows through this duct. Okay, this is the duct. We're heating it up, and it exits at 30 degrees Celsius. So we know the temperature at the exit, but we don't know anything else about the exit. Uh, we have also been told that no moisture is being added or removed. OK, we're not adding any moisture, nor are we removing any moisture. So the mass of water vapor is going to remain the same. And we are also not adding air or removing air. So the mass of air also remains the same. And the pressure, the mixture pressure remains constant at one bar. So P1 is equal to P2 is one bar. Now for steady state operation, which is what we typically do uh, and ignore kinetic and potential energy changes as usual, we need to determine the humidity ratio omega 2 and the rate of heat transfer in kilojoule per kilogram of dry air, right? Mass rate of dry air is wanted we need to divide it by uh, to well achieve this temperature rise. So the first thing is we need humidity ratio at the exit, okay? Omega 2. So let's look at what is the value of how is omega defined? Omega is defined as mass of water vapor, MV, divided by mass of dry air. Now, in this particular problem, we already uh, discussed that we are not adding or removing any air. We are not adding or removing any moisture. So what do you think about uh, Omega? Is it going to change from state one to state two, or is it going to remain the same? remain the same exactly it has to remain the same right because uh, we are not uh, changing the mass of water vapor nor are we changing the mass of air so uh, omega 1 would be equal to omega 2 and this actually helps us a bit okay because we need to determine omega 2 now that we have determined both are exactly the same so since uh, from mass balance we know that uh, nothing else is changing a mass of dry air at the inlet is equal to the mass of dry air at exit same way for water vapor, since we are not adding any one of them, omega 1 would be equal to omega 2, or you could write it as simply as omega. Now, this is what we need to determine anyways. Uh, we need to determine omega, which is mass of water vapor divided by mass of dry air. Okay. Now, the way to determine this uh, is we can make use of the formulation uh, that we have for omega. Okay. So, you can write omega. Uh, if you recall, we wrote the formula as 0.622 times PV by P minus PV. Now the value of P is given to us, right? It's given as one bar. The thing that we do not have is PV. Okay, we do not have it directly given to us. We need to uh, determine it. Now at state one, <clears throat> we know the temperature, 10 degrees Celsius. We know the relative humidity, 80%. At state two, we know the temperature, 30 degrees Celsius. We just know that omega 2 is equal to omega 1, but we don't know the value of omega. Okay, now uh, here the thing is how do we determine PV or partial pressure of water vapor at um, at state 1 or state 2, uh, whatever is needed. Uh, it's going to remain the same simply because uh, omega is remaining the same. So uh, any ideas? How do we determine partial pressure of water vapor? How do we determine this PV? Uh, just to remind you, the relative humidity is PV by PG, where PG is simply saturation pressure at temperature of your interest. Okay, uh, so let me explain that to you. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. All we need is PV, right? If you have PV, you'll be able to get, uh, we will be able to solve 
the problem here. Now we also have been provided Omega, uh, the fee one. We have been provided fee one as 80%. So we know what the value of fee, okay? We don't know PV, all right? But we can calculate PG, which is simply P sat at temperatures, uh, at the given temperature. So what we're going to do is, uh, since we have the value of fee one, we don't have fee two as well. We just have fee one. So uh, the uh, the partial pressure water vapor is going to remain the same. So we, I, I will not write it as PV1. I'll just write PV divided by PG1. Okay. Now PG1 uh, is simply saturation pressure at T1 of 10 degrees Celsius. So if you go to table A2, right from table A2, you find that this value is 0 0.01228 bar. So I have PSAT. What do I do with it? Well, um, I have this value right here. I have P1. I can calculate P, PV from there. Okay, so PV would be equal to uh, the value of P1 is 80% or 0.8 times 0.01228 bar. So this comes out to be 0 0.0098 bar. Now we have PV, right? And we already know the pressure of the mixture is one bar. It's not changing. Uh, it's, it's remaining constant throughout. So we have PV and we have uh, the pressure. So we have everything that we need. It's a matter of simply plugging in the numbers now. Okay. So uh, once you determine PV, you plug in the, uh, you can plug it into this equation here. We already know pressure. It's one bar. So we put in these numbers and it comes out to be 0 0.00616. Now we expect this number to be very small because the amount of water vapor in air is very small, right? It's smaller than 1%, much smaller than 1% in fact. But the interesting part is that even though the uh, quantity of water vapor is so small, it plays a huge role in deciding our comfort levels. Any questions here? Any questions in what, the way we solved it? So if you look at this question, the only uh, the only tricky part was you had to sort of uh, not go after determining anything at uh, state two. You just had to understand that omega one is equal to omega two and then use the value of uh, phi one to calculate PV. And once you did that, it was very straightforward. OK, so this this uh, the initial part is the uh, tricky part uh, about cracking the problem and it's simply going to come through practice. All right, so make sure you practice this. Now let's go. Uh, let's try and solve the other part of the problem. The other part of the problem is uh, determining how much heat. Uh, sorry, how much uh, Q do we need to provide to raise the temperature of this particular uh, moist air with a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and 80% uh, relative humidity from the, its initial state to a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius without adding or removing any moisture. OK, this is the question. Now the way to solve this is pretty straightforward. You have to again start from uh, the way we would do it for any other uh, system, right? We have an open system. You, you're just heating up the air that's going through the system. You need to apply energy balance to calculate it, right? You know the uh, the, uh, the exit temperature of air. You know the exit uh, entry temperature of air. So it's simply about adding, uh, applying the energy balance. The only thing that's going to change here is the way we look at the enthalpy, right? Here we are not looking at enthalpy for one component, but we are looking for enthalpy of two different components, dry air plus the moisture. OK, so uh, you do not have to get uh, confused or get uh, uh, intimidated by uh, the mixture that we're dealing with. We always have to use the balance and the only thing uh, that changes is the way you handle the properties. And after a couple of practices, you'll be very confident on how to take care of the properties. So this is the simple energy balance formula for steady state system, right? We don't, uh, we do not have any uh, work input or output. So this term goes down to zero. Now, uh, this term, which typically refers to the mass flow rate times the enthalpy uh, that's coming in minus the one that's going out. We just write it typically in terms of m dot h1, right? Uh, but here, since we're dealing with uh, a, a mixture, not just uh, not just a pure component, we need to take care of both parts of the uh, measure, right? So you have uh, the first part right here, mass flow rate of air times enthalpy of air plus mass flow rate of water vapor times enthalpy of water. So this is all we need to do. 
the enthalpy that's coming in represents the enthalpy of the two components of the mixture, right? The two ideal gas components of the mixture. So all we are doing here is to apply this energy balance and solve for Q. So what we can do is we can sort of uh, take m dot a common and uh, write the rest of it in terms of uh, uh, m dot a times the change in enthalpy. So for example, I could send uh, everything else to this other side right here and I could write Q dot CV, which is basically nothing but QN, right? By default, Q dot CV means you're providing heat input into the system. Uh, and this should be equal to m dot a times HA2 minus HA1 plus m dot V times HV2 minus HV1. Now in the question, uh, they did not ask us to determine the amount of heat that we need to add. What is asked is the amount of heat that is needed to be added per unit mass of dryer. And what is the mass of dryer? Well, this is the mass of dryer. So we are not interested in Q dot CV, but we are interested in Q dot CV divided by mass flow rate of dryer, which would give us HA2 minus HA1 plus M dot V by M dot A times HV2 minus HV1. Okay. Now, what is this M dot V by M dot A? This, if you recall, is basically the definition for humidity ratio. So you can simply write it as omega. And we know that omega 1 is equal to omega 2. So I can just write omega. It does not uh, matter anymore, right? It's, it's the same value that we're dealing with. Okay, so uh, this is where we end up with. We already know the value of omega. We already know uh, how much uh, is the mass of water vapor per unit mass of dry air. Now, the way to determine uh, the rest of the things is we need enthalpy of dry air, uh, right? Which is HA2 and HA1. We can get it from table A22. And the enthalpy of water vapor, which we said is uh, approximately equal to the enthalpy of saturated vapor at the same temperature. Okay, now this is something we can get it from table A2. Uh, do you think we have all the information that we need to get enthalpy of dry air from a table A22 or do we need some other information? Should I repeat the question? Sorry, Doctor, what was the question? Do we have all information to determine the enthalpy of dry air from table A22? Or uh, do we need any more information? Do you mean uh, more information from table A20? No, I mean more information from the question in general. Like we have been provided with uh, temperatures, right? Uh, is that enough or do we also need to get maybe pressure or something else? We know temperature T1 and T2. It's 10 and 30 degrees Celsius. So do we need anything else? Specific volume, Excel. Okay. Uh, and the uh, mass flow rate. All right. Uh, well, I'm just asking about the enthalpy, right? So uh, we and we are trying to determine the quantity per unit mass flow rate. So we don't really need the mass flow rates. Uh, in this equation on the right, we just have uh, the difference in enthalpies plus omega times the difference in enthalpies for water vapor. So for getting it for air, uh, we actually we are looking at uh, something which is an ideal gas, right? So we said air and water vapor both are ideal gases. And if you recall, the enthalpies of these ideal gases depend only on temperature. So if you have temperature, you have all the information that you need. You don't actually need anything else. Okay, so uh, this is the equation that we have. We have the temperatures T1 and T2. You can directly go to tables and determine the enthalpies from the table. So for the dry air, which is the first part, we get the enthalpies at 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius from table A22, right? Temperature is more than enough. For the water vapor, since we show that it is not uh, the values for enthalpy do not depend on the pressure uh, at the conditions that we are considering. So you just go to table A2, which is the saturated water table uh, in terms of the temperatures, pick up the va value for saturated enthalpy of saturated vapor HG at 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. OK, that's your HV2 and HV1. So once you do that and plug in the numbers, this is the enthalpies that we got from the tables. 
uh, once you plug in the numbers for the enthalpies, the heat uh, input uh, comes out to be 20.32. Now, if you want to look at the individual contributions, well, the majority of the uh, the enthalpy rises uh, coming from uh, majority of the heat input is basically uh, taken by the dry air to increase this temperature from you know 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. We have very small quantity of water vapor within the uh, within uh, the moist air, so uh, the amount of enthalpy it, it takes to increase its temperature from 10 to 30 degrees Celsius is rather small, 0.22 degrees, uh, 0.22 kilojoule per kilogram of dry air. And this is mainly because uh, the quantity of water vapor that we're dealing with is also very small, right? Omega is very small. Now, uh, what would happen if you add more moisture? If, uh, here we said we have phi one of 80%. Let's say if we had phi one of 50%, that would simply mean we have less, less water vapor in the air. And if you add less water vapor in the air to begin with, then this quantity here, 0.22, this would be smaller. The dryer would have no impact, right? The dryer would again be the 20 point, would again be 20.1. This quantity 0.22 would be maybe smaller. Maybe it'll be, uh, I don't know, maybe 0 0.15, 0 0.16 or something. So in terms of the enthalpy, uh, the main contribution uh, is taken by dry air simply because it's in, it's a majority, but the uh, contribution of water vapor, uh, it depends on how much water vapor we have, okay? So this is the end of problem one.